Helsingar, fellow Soul Guardians, Liquid Minstrel here, and I'm back with another video. This time it is episode one on my series of Legends of Soul Guard, where we're going to take a look at the campaign game mode. ALP Gaming. Level up! Alright, so as stated in the introduction, we're going to be taking a look at the campaign game mode today. Uh, but first, uh, I want to give a shout out to my sponsor once again. We are being sponsored by the good people at Snowprint. Uh, they are kicking me down some in-game currency to make these videos for you today. Uh, but of course, they are not influencing in any way, shape, or form my opinions and ideas, and they are those are completely my own, and the topics and the things that I talk about and, uh, are not dictated or directed by Snowprint whatsoever. So here we go, into the campaign mode. So much like uh, many match three games, puzzle games out there, uh, there is a map that you progress along, and, and every stop along the map is a different level that you're going to complete. And so in that regard, it looks very, very similar to, to many of the match three games that you may have uh, come across in your time. There are five worlds that, uh, that all kind of correspond to the different rarity tiers of creatures or tunes, uh, as many of us like to call them. So in Midgard, World 1, you're going to be dealing with mostly your commons. In Jotunheim, uh, the, your rares. Vanaheim are your epics. Uh, Helheim are your legendaries. And uh, Niflheim are your mythics. You can replay most of the levels for farming purposes, and you're going to want to do that. Um, and most every fifth level can be replayed on heroic difficulty for some extra loot. Um, that heroic difficulty is going to be a little bit more of a challenge to, to defeat than the first time you went through it, uh, but you really are going to get some nice bonuses by going through and defeating all those levels you can on heroic difficulty. Once a level is defeated, in heroic difficulty, then you can use a raid ticket to loot and get the, the, the loot from that level without having to play the level, which also is going to be very, very helpful. And that's part of your uh, your daily uh, requirements to get to, to get your daily bonuses. Now, you will use up some of your energy points uh, every time you play a level. So use up 10 energy for the first time that you're playing through and trying to defeat the level the first time. Um, after you complete a level, then it's only going to take eight energy points to replay it. Uh, however, if you lose that that attempt, it's only going to take half the energy points. So either four or five of the energy points uh, that you would normally cost. So so you actually get a little bit back, if you will, if uh, if you don't finish or complete that uh, that attempt at the level. So next, we're going to look at the individual worlds and uh, a little bit more detail about those. So first in Midgard, Midgard is, is levels 1 through 40, and uh, and the mini boss is Rap the Draugr, who you're going to face end up facing three times uh, as you progress through those 40 levels. And uh, and the main boss at the end is Nidhogg. Uh, and so as you progress through Mid, uh, Midgard, you will actually see on the map the uh, entrances to the treasure caves, uh, bounties and dungeons and and so those are all um, you'll most likely unlock all of those as you are progressing although those are uh, dependent on on your personal Emla level progression and not on your campaign level progression the next time Jotunheim uh, is levels 41 through 80 your mini boss is uh, Jotar and your main boss is Arungner and uh, and you will also see official entrances for the hero arena and the lot festival uh, the third Heim, Vanaheim, is levels 81 through 120. Uh, the mini boss is Gloom King, and the main boss is Maskina. Fourth Heim is Helheim, levels 121 through 160, with the uh, the mini boss being Nykor, the Bone Dancer, and the main boss being Nykva. And uh, and through uh, on that map, you'll see the official entrance to the Underworld. And then finally, Niflheim, uh, levels 161 through 200, and the mini boss is is a recreation of uh, Nidhogg in an icy form. Um, and the uh, main boss, I forget the name at the, at the moment, but uh, I'll have to get that in a uh, future video for you. I'll put it in the uh, description below. Um, now, there is something interesting I noticed on, uh, on the map for Niflheim. Uh, there is a mysterious unmarked entrance to something. And uh, so I'm curious, is that possibly a future game mode like, you know, Underworld or Hero Arena or, or something that has yet to be added to the map? 
Uh, I'm curious if uh, if the developers will weigh in on that. So we'll uh, we'll see. So overall, the uh, the campaigns end up being a rather minor part of the game. Um, as you get to the point where where I am at, at level 45, going on level 46 for Embla, um, you basically just use the campaign levels for farming, and and that's really all there is to it is is just for farming resources, but the campaign levels are very important when you're starting off and and you're going to need to play through all of those you're going to want to play through all of those to get the rewards uh as well as it's going to be a really good benchmark for you to see where your tunes are at as you progress and where you need to uh improve certain areas before you can advance past uh, a specific campaign level and this brings me to one of my points that I often see in, in the forums, uh, whether it be on the on LOS uh, forum, the official LOS forum, or Reddit, or Facebook. So many times people are posting, help, I can't get past level whatever, and uh, in the campaign mode. And um, the, the, uh, the response to that is simply, you can't get past it because of a couple different reasons. And that brings me to uh, my first pro tip of the day and and that is if you can't beat a campaign level that means you either don't have enough uh, a strong enough selection of your tunes or you're not using the right tunes <laughs> so um, the first one can be fixed by just farming that's that's an indicator to you that you need to farm you need to build up your creatures you need to do other game modes to bring your crew up to the level that you're going to be able to beat the campaign mode because like i said once you get to a certain point in the game you are going to be able to beat all of those campaign modes on autoplay on heroic difficulty and you won't even think twice about it so i know it may be difficult and you're pulling your hair out right now trying to get past it but um it's just an indicator you need to beef up a little bit okay um the other thing is is maybe you're not using the right selection of tunes. Um, there's certain tunes like um, Elfling. Not a big fan of Elfling, but his little stun ability with his button comes in really, really handy on some of those campaign modes. And, and that one stun ability may be the difference between you being able to finish that campaign mode or not. Because that one ability to stun can get you an extra attack or two or three um, that'll put you over the top where you wouldn't normally be able to do that. So really pay attention to uh, to the skills and attributes of your tunes and make sure you are trying different combinations in order to get past specific campaign levels you're having difficulty with. Next pro tip, number two. Easy way to increase the, uh, the ability of your tunes, increase the strength, the damage, all those things of your tunes is putting idols on them, all right? Everything that you need for idols comes from the underworld. So you need to play the underworld levels. You need to farm the underworld levels. And through those idols, you will be able to add incredible bonuses to your creatures. And the great thing about idols in the underworld, it doesn't cost you any gold or diamonds or dust to do anything with idols. So you can essentially double up the abilities of your creatures with the right idol. For instance, Redguard. Redguard has a base strength of nine with no growth, okay? So after holding one turn, he would attack for nine points of damage as long as he didn't take damage during, during the opponent's turn. But if I put a Munin Moon Idol on him, that gives him strength bonus of two and a growth bonus of nine. So with that one idol placed on red guard now instead of attacking for nine after holding for one turn he's going to attack for 20. it's more than double the damage and so idols are a super important aspect of this game i will do a further video later video going into one covering the underworld but then also two covering the ins and outs of idols which i know i get a lot of questions about that as well so idols super important doesn't cost you anything except time to do the farming and any player whether you're free to play or pay, play to win pay to win you can get those idols on there and greatly increase the viability of your tunes the last pro tip i want to talk about is pay attention to your creatures base stats um the base stats of your creatures some are normally higher uh, than others or naturally higher than others and so you want to play to those strengths so for instance, Mossbow 
has a an eight sync bonus to start off with. So whenever I'm playing in Mossbow, I always try and make sure and send off two or three at the same time so that they get that nice sync bonus. You know, you have two Mossbow with an eight sync bonus each, so all of a sudden you're doing an additional 16 damage just for having them, two of them go at the same time. So pay attention to those base stats and play to the strengths of your tunes and that will also help you increase the damage output for, uh, for a given level. All right, well that's gonna do it for me today. Um, good luck out there. Send me your questions or comments, like, share, and subscribe um, to, the, to the video and my channel. And uh, I'll see you out there. Take care.